Welcome to the AM News. Let's get into the news in detail. Sata Wind Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says 7,000 fire service personnel have been recruited within seven years, describing it as unprecedented with plans of recruiting some more. Speaking at the commissioning of the Fire Academy and Training School at Doya Mkot Nkwanta in the Ahafo region, Dr. Baumia said government is committed to enhancing the capacity of firefighters to perform world-class services. Precious Semevo has more in this report. Over 30 acres of land at Duya Nkwanta in the Tanonov district of the Ahafo region fully commenced in March 2023. The first phase has an administration block classrooms, dormitories and a training square. Ahead of the commissioning, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said the fire training school becomes the third in Ghana, with two of them by the NPP government in 2024 to train recruits for firefighting services. He said the government is committed to improving the capacity of the service after recruiting over 7,000 personnel in seven years. It is gratifying to note that the Ghana National Fire Service recorded Remarkable reduction in fire outbreaks in 2023 as compared to 2022. When we came into office, the fire service had a total of 8,000 personnel. Just after seven years, we have added 7,000 personnel to the Ghana National Fire Service. This is an 88% increase. This achievement, spearheaded by the MPP government, led by His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado, showcases the administration's commitment to enhancing the capabilities of our firefighting force to provide world-class emergency firefighting and rescue services to the good people of this great country of ours. The assurance here is that the MPP government is even more poised to recruit more personnel into the Ghana National Fire Service to meet international standards and ensuring a fireman to citizen ratio of 1 to 800. Chief Fire Officer Julius Kuno said the training school underscores the importance attached to professional development. He expressed concerns about behaviors by some individuals that frustrate their work. We continue to struggle with more attacks on personnel and advances as some business and therefore urge the public to cooperate as personnel are committed and dedicated to duty even to the peril of their lives. We also continue to receive calls out alarms from mysterious members of the public. In 2023, we received 691,591 of such false alarms. Such calls blocked or delayed genuine distress calls for need. Your Excellency, I am obliged on behalf of the entire service to express our sincere gratitude to government and I assure you that this business equipment we put to good use and return to the long our life span. Parliamentary candidate for the NPP in Town of Dr. Gideon Boako expressed delight with the opportunities available in the school for qualified applicants in his constituent. Precious Semevo Joy News, Duan Quanta. The Afinso Municipal Security Council in the Ashanti region has banned former boss of the Ghana National Petroleum Authority, Dr. Kofi Kodiasapong, from holding himself as paramount chief of the Afinso traditional area. As the council institutes measures to safeguard peace in the area, KK Sapong has also been cautioned against holding any public event under the guise of being a chief. This follows a viral social media video in which the former GNPC boss received pleasantries from well wishers who referred to him as a rightful of Finn Sohini. Ohimeng Tewia of a security desk has more in the following report. Construction of the Fire Academy and Training School of the Race the selection of the new paramount chief for Finso became intense following the death of Finso Mahini and Nanavia Fiakenten III. 
The former boss of GMPC, Dr. K.K. Sapong, was twice rejected by the Asantehini after being presented twice by the embattled Offenso Queen mother, Nana Sewa Nyakon. The Asantehini later accepted a new candidate who swore oath of allegiance under the stool name, Nana Jamna Kenten II. The events preceding the installment caused Nana Sewa Nyakon, who was distilled by the Asantehini, for insubordination. But Dr. K. K. Sapong, in a recent viral video, is seen receiving well wishes who called him out as a true paramount chief of Offenso. The embattled Queen Mother also wrote a letter to the Offenso Municipal Chief Executive on March 13, 2024, announcing Dr. K. K. Sapong as the new Omahini nominee. This latest development has raised security concerns in the area. Here is the chairman of the Municipal Security Council, Kinsley Ousuapia, who first admitted the development is a security concern. The Queen Mother, he wrote a letter to us that he has nominated Dr. Keke Sapun as a chief. He quoted the Chief Tansi Act. So he wrote council members, and though the council and the chairman, that uh, we should accord Dr. Kiki Sapon as a chief. Then we also wrote back to the Queen Mother that, so far as the Security Council is concerned, Nana Jamra Akenten, number two, is the chief. So we don't have any chief apart from Nana Jamra Akenten. I have not seen the video. But uh, so far as we are concerned, the Security Council is concerned. Uh, we have only, uh, here we have two uh, chief palace. One is at Old Town and the other one is at uh, um, New Town. Uh, KK Sapon cannot go there to sit there as a chief. Maybe he did it, um, the video uh, maybe uh, is circulating. I haven't seen it, but maybe he did it at uh, his bedroom. Maybe he did it at the bedroom, because he can't do it at the open space. Well, because um, we have only one chief. So here, you know, you have, you have been in town. Uh, there is peace here. There is peace. Uh, so KK Sapon is not the chief. Uh, in Ashanti region, you can't fight with uh, Otunfo. He can't, Gege Sapon cannot um, sit in, in public and claim himself to be a chief. For people who will not, the security council will not allow that. According to him, measures have been put in place to prevent um, an escalation. We have two palaces. One at Offensu, New Town, one is at Old Town. The police is guiding there every day every day. So because we don't want uh, anybody uh, who claim himself to be a chief to go there and sit there. The police are, are there in, uh, in front of the two palaces. At a meeting of the official traditional council on Monday, some members called for the transfer of police personnel for compromising on security management. The new offensive Hine Nana Jamina Kenten has cautioned against any deed disrespecting the authority of the Santehini. Nana Kwaku Riafi is a linguist. Sebi, omo omo boye hon ba eno. Ne sebi se yebe kebi bi chile mo. Na mo se yebe ye hon juma. Ne an fa sebi a soja fwa a me mo diya. Ne che se ye kwa ana se yebae. E no na nana no omo e kebi bi fa a polisi fwa hon no. Se ba ye, na no ye kwa da otun fwa se. Ye hon se, eh, moto be wa, eh, be 50. Eguaye yeni, ewo krimu, yeye konu mu yes adienu. Ye mu se ye hon se, omu ti miche ba akumpu. Miwa, one of the royal families, Asuna Akonkodiasi, has pleaded allegiance to the new Omaihini as they disowned the ex-queen mother, a member of the family. Akwesi Owusu Efriye speaks for the family. Akwesi Owusu Efriye speaks for the family. She became the queen mother because he is a family member of the Akonkodiasi family. She rather disowned us. She rather disowned us because at least 
he, she was given the mandate to choose somebody from any of the two, any of the two. But we being the, what our concordance is where she can, we thought, we thought that she will, at least she will choose somebody from us. From Ofiso in the Ashanti region for Joy News, Oim Interior reporting. An engineer is making a case for transport innovations that promote environmental sustainability. Chairman of the Secretarial Advisory Board of the Regional Transport Research and Education Center, Kumasi, of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. John Bernard Kuranteng York, thinks the use of electric vehicles, expanding public transport, uh, transit networks, among others, are essential in this direction. Speaking at the 2024 Trek Innovation Week in Kumasi, Dr. John Bernard Cranton York also called for innovations in policy making and governance. This would involve introducing new ideas, technologies, policies, and practices that contribute to advancement of equitable, resilient, and sustainable transportation systems. I'm talking about innovation that aim to ensure access of transportation services and infrastructure for all cities, regardless of your socioeconomic status. This may involve designing inclusive public transport system, improving accessibility for people with disabilities and implementing innovative fare structure so to make uh, transport more affordable uh, while curbing poverty. I'm referring to innovation focused on building robust, adaptable transport infrastructure that can withstand and recover from various shocks um, as well. I'm also referring to innovation that promote environmental sustainable modes of transportation, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and minimize environmental impact. This may include promoting the use of electric vehicles, expanding public transit network, supporting active moves such as walking and cycling. The Trek Innovation Week is under the theme Promoting Transport Equity, Resilience and Sustainability. The three-day event will serve as a platform to showcase groundbreaking research, cutting-edge technologies and transformative ideas that are shaping the future of transport engineering. It will feature seminars, panel discussion and networking opportunities. Provost of the KNUST College of Engineering, Professor Kwabna Biruchu Mnyako, encouraged participants to share ideas to drive the sector. Speak of innovation, I encourage each of you to embrace the spirit of curiosity, exploration, and discovery. Take advantage of the various activities, seminars, panel discussion, and networking opportunities. Vice Chancellor of the Ghana Communication Technology University, Professor Oheni Efuakwa, has challenged students to make the necessary sacrifices to achieve excellence. He wants his, these students to cut back sleep and work hard to attain greatness. Listen and write this down. Okay. There is no secret to greatness in life. Uh, prof, prof is ready to hear. There is no easy way to greatness in life. You have to toil, toil to be able to achieve it. If you want to achieve greatness that is sustained, mm -hmm. you, you have to earn it. earn it. If you steal it, it will go the same way as you stole, you it. stole it. Perfect. So the height that great men, the height, the height, height the short height that great men rigged and kept. So you are able to reach there as a height and then you keep, you, you sustain it. We're not attained by sudden flights. So it's not like you've put a stone in, in a <laughs> catapult mm -hmm. and then so shoot it and then within a second you get there. No, it doesn't work like that. It takes time. But those, whilst their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. Mm -hmm. If you want to become successful, they say everybody should sleep eight hours. I tell you, if you sleep eight hours, that's normal for everybody to sleep eight hours.
But I tell you that if you sleep eight hours, you can't achieve greatness. You will be a normal person. So you go to work, you are just a normal staff, you are paid the normal, then you can't afford a car, you can't build a house, your, your life will be normal. If you want to be super normal, to become successful and to be great, you have to cut down on the hours of your sleep and put those hours of, of, of your sleep Moving on, learning outcomes in the lower primary level have been positive four years after the play-based learning initiative was intensified in some schools across the country. Revealing this at an event to assess the impact of the initiative in a crown Tuesday, Deputy Education Minister Reverend Intim Fojo highlighted how the learners are now able to communicate, recall what they learn and exhibit talents because of the confidence gained Hana Odame has been speaking to facilitators and learners about this impact and the, about the, uh, which the minister talked about. Play-based learning introduced in some schools in Ghana has been identified as one of the measures helping to improve learning outcomes of learners, especially in numeracy, literacy and science. The initiative, which involves infusing play in teaching methods, helps the learners easily remember lessons and build their confidence as they exhibit their skills effortlessly. Wendy Ejapoma Isidu, a facilitator for 16 years, tells Joy News she's seen massive improvement in the outcomes of her students since she started applying the play-based method four years ago. Let's take um, data collection, for example. Do you remember this game we used to play as children? Those who were born on Monday, get up, let's dance. Yes, with data collection, when you introduce it with the learners, so those who were born on Monday, get up, let's dance. Monday bonds will gather at one place. Tuesday bonds, Wednesday bonds, they all gather. Now, let us count the members in the group. They will count. We are one, two, three. Okay. So this group, how many were you? Madam, we were five. Tuesday, how many were you? Madam, we were six. This way, they will never forget that. If you want to get the number in the data, you gather it, you count it, then you record it. With this system of uh, teaching, we avoid the instances where teachers and facilitators use the theoretical way of teaching. It becomes more practical. So with this method, we have a long way to cover the entire class. Some students of the Dianses International School testified of how learning through play has helped them in their academics. When we are using play base, it's fun and easy and it helps to stick in our head. It's much more easier in understanding. So I really loved how it is done. I like this lesson because it helped me understand and remember this lesson. Speaking at an event to assess the impact of the play-based initiative in some schools across the country, Deputy Education Minister Reverend Intim Fojo revealed the training of more facilitators for the program so it can be rolled out across the country. We are overcoming learning poverty. We are also imbibing in our learners the 21st century skills critical competencies of communication, critical thinking, collaboration. And so the future of this country is very bright. And so the ministry intends to go to scale. For Joy News, I am Hannah Odame. On that note, it's a wrap for the AM News on the AM Show. Up next is the news review. Stick with us from now till 10 a.m.